Alright guys, how's it going? I'm having one of those weeks where absolutely nothing seems to get done. It's been 6 days since my last video. In this last video, the Paxwell video, I said that I'd been doing a lot of graphics videos and that I'd be looking at new stuff, and almost instantly after uploading it, I get word that I'm being sent a graphics card for review. You can probably figure out which one it is. So I spent most of yesterday waiting on it arriving. And I waited, and I waited, and it never arrived. And by the looks of things, it's going to be late today again. So I'm going to have to contact them and figure out what is up. Assuming I do actually get hold of it by tomorrow, you can expect a review very soon. Unlike the RX 480 review, it won't be a huge review. It will mostly just be looking at the card and having a look at the benchmarks. Now I talked about benchmarks and this is what this video is going to be about. Because while I said I was hanging around waiting, what I've actually been doing is taking a closer look at the benchmarks, a closer look at the software, and ways in which I can basically improve my own benchmarking to make it faster, make it easier going forward. So hopefully you find this one interesting. Let's get started. Now, in one or two recent videos, I've had a bit of a go at the classic tech press for failing to properly benchmark the next generation games, that is your DX12 and your Vulcan games. One or two in the press continued to benchmark Doom on OpenGL instead of Vulcan. And the big story there was, of course, AMD made huge gains under Vulcan and they were a mile behind in OpenGL. And also in my GTX 1060 review roundup, I had a bit of a go at websites like Tom's Hardware for benchmarking Hitman and DX11 and for a bunch of other stuff. There are a bunch of reasons why this can be. And some people assume malicious intent, other people just assume it's incompetence. And in actual fact, it can just be laziness as well. Or maybe even it's just a lack of time. Whatever the reasons for it, I think that when these benchmarks are heavily contributing to purchase decisions which are worth multiple hundreds of millions of dollars to these companies, then they should at least be done right. Let's take a look at another couple of examples where the benchmarking just isn't quite right. If we look at Tech Power Up, who I use quite a lot because they benchmark a lot of games, and if you look at the Tech Power Up main site, you can see that they get graphics cards constantly. AMD and Nvidia cards every other day, but the only way that this can be done is if the process is basically automated. You've got how many games? 15 games in this case. And it's the same guy doing it, the owner, Wizard. So this process, this entire benchmarking process must be automated. It's the only way to do it, especially when he's benchmarking so many cards. Now that's fine just so long as you know what it's all about. At the end of Wizard's most recent review of the ASUS RX480 Strix, he mentions that he is slightly undecided on DX12, which is currently in its infancy, and only time can tell how much the power balance will shift in 2017 when more DX12 titles will be released, which is fair enough. But in all honesty, there are plenty of DX12 titles that Wizard could be benchmarking, and he's not. In actual fact, the only DX12 game he benchmarks is Rise of the Tomb Raider. He's got Hitman in there, but he doesn't benchmark Hitman, claiming that there are issues with the DX12 implementation. Hitman's a slightly buggy game, but it's really not that difficult to get a DX12 benchmark on it, and other sites manage to do it. But what this is really most likely coming down to, is that this automated process is more suited to benchmarking games in built benchmarks, the canned benchmarks. There's no way that Wizard is playing through games here, getting actual gameplay benchmarks and all this. It's impossible for him to do that. So just be aware that, in a lot of cases, these numbers may not actually be representative of actual gameplay. And this is something that I've been thinking a lot about recently. Now, the next one was Hexus, and we're back in Rise of the Tomb Raider DX12. Rise of the Tomb Raider is a great game, and I will also be benchmarking it. But as you know, it's a Gameworks title, and it's also the only game where AMD's DX12 performance has been horrible. It was also pretty bad for Nvidia on DX12 as well. But recently, one or two new patches have made the game much better under DX12. And over at Hexus, they rebenched it, this time with the Sapphire Radeon RX480 Nitro, and we can see the massive gains. Down here we've got the RX480, the reference, at 70 frames per second. Here we've got the Fury X at 72 frames per second, and up here we have the RX480 Nitros, not that far behind the MSI GTX 1060 Gaming X. But my point here is, Hexus didn't even bother to go back and rebench the other cards. They're simply recycling old numbers. To their credit, they have at least started benchmarking Doom on Vulcan. But really, what this comes down to is, there's a bunch of numbers out there that you simply cannot trust. This is just misleading. So what exactly is the cause here? I mean, what is the problem? Well, in order to understand part of the problem with DX12 and Vulcan benchmarking, we need to know how easy it is on DX11. Now, the go-to software program for benchmarking on DX11 is, of course, Fraps. 
It's a very simple program to use. You simply select a benchmarking hotkey, tick all the boxes, and you can stop it after a certain amount of seconds if you want. Choose which side of the screen you want to see the overlay. Load up the game, you should instantly see the Fraps FPS number. When you press the benchmarking hotkey, it automatically saves all this stuff into your Fraps folder. Now in this case, I've done three benchmarks of Warhammer. You can get the numbers of all the runs quickly, simply by looking at the Fraps log. And here we can see this 180,000 milliseconds means that I ran the benchmark for three minutes, which is a pretty long time for a benchmark. However, in a game like Warhammer, I really don't feel that 10 or 15 seconds is enough. So my Warhammer benchmark is a three minute long benchmark where we see a lot of fighting and a lot of close up fighting. The worry about something like that is how repeatable is the benchmark? And while I was watching it, it was clear that every battle was different. But in the end, the average difference is very, very small. You take the average of these three numbers and you're not going to be far away. A one frame per second difference in three runs over a three minute benchmark is almost nothing. So in a game like Warhammer, there is no excuse for using the inbuilt benchmark, especially if it's not indicative of the actual gameplay. But that is how easy it is to benchmark a game in DirectX 11 or in OpenGL. You do of course get other files as well, so if you want, you can manipulate these numbers in a spreadsheet, and this is what I will be doing. So anybody can benchmark in DirectX 11. DirectX 12 and Vulkan, as I alluded to, right now is an awful lot more difficult. The only real program for benchmarking DX12 and Vulkan games is a small utility called PresentMon, which I guess stands for Present Monitor. I believe this was written by a software engineer over at Intel. What I assume it does is, in Windows 10, it monitors these things called presents to the operating system. And from this, you can get the millisecond frame times. And from that, you can get the frames per second. I'm just gonna show you how this works. It is a command line program, so instantly it's going to be off-putting to just about everybody. So you would start by getting the package, currently build 105. You're gonna create a folder on your C drive called presentmon and basically just drag that in. You can run it with a bunch of flags, as you can see here. It's a little bit scratchy, it doesn't always work first time. But if, say, you give it a delay, and then time it the same way as Fraps times it, say 30 or 40 seconds, then it should, hopefully, capture the program. What I did, however, was create a bunch of Windows batch files doing all of this stuff. So, for example, if I look at my RX480 Total Warhammer DX12 batch file, what it's doing here is, it's moving to my benchmark directory, it is running the presentmon program with a 5 second delay, timed for 3 minutes, it's finding the process name warhammer.exe, which incidentally you can find by going into task manager, and the process will appear here. So for example, if I now run something like doom, we can now see the process has appeared. But this part you don't even really need. Finally, you can create the output file and put it in any directory you want. In my case, I have a directory for each graphics card, within which is each API, within which is each game, and finally, the CSV file, which is saved. What this file saves is a bunch of information on the benchmark. Next up, we pause, which means after this is run for three minutes, it will not run again until I press a key on the keyboard. It simply does it again because when you're benchmarking, you really should be benchmarking at least two and preferably three or more runs in order to reduce the chance of errors. Right, so say you've gone through all of that and you've got your three CSV files. You now need to load these up in Calc or Excel, which brings up the text import window. So long as all this stuff looks okay, just go ahead. You might need to change one of the separators here so that it doesn't look like a complete mess. So long as it looks quite ordered, it should be okay. And this is all the information that present Mon saves. You've got your application ID, you've got your process ID, and a bunch of stuff I've got no idea what it does. The part we are interested in, in order to get stuff like frame times and your frames per second, is this column K, milliseconds between presents. And this is basically your frame time in milliseconds. And as you can see, there is an awful lot of them. Now, frame times are good, but a lot of people still prefer FPS. So in order to get the FPS from this, we first of all need to insert a column. Now in the column next to the first value, we're gonna go equals 1000 divided by K2. And that is how you get the frames per second, which in this case we can see for the very first frame was 66.12. Now we need to drag this all the way down and it goes on forever. 
and forever, and forever, and forever, until you finally reach the bottom. So every frame, every present, changed into the frames per second at that point in time. If you want to get the average over the run, we're going to click on the auto sum, and instead of sum, we're going to go with the average. And as we can see, 59.76 frames per second. Imagine doing that with every single benchmark run, every single game. Now, of course, you can write a spreadsheet to do all this stuff, but you better be a spreadsheet wizard if you're doing that. This is the kind of hoops that you need to go through in order to benchmark Vulkan and DX12 currently. So maybe now you're beginning to realise that perhaps one of the reasons why DX12 and Vulkan aren't really being benchmarked a lot is because this process really does need a bit of streamlining. Well, guess what I've been doing? As you probably know by now, especially if you watched my interview with AMD's Jason Meggett, in early June, I had the chance to meet AMD in Stockholm for their Polaris launch, and there were other YouTubers and members of the press there as well. And one of the people I met was Andrew from Tech Team GB. As you can see, he is a YouTuber, and he also has his Tech Team GB website. Now, as mentioned previously, about a month ago, the Doom Vulcan benchmarks came out, and Andrew had contacted me via email to ask what I was doing to get PresentMon to work. I, of course, emailed him back, basically pointing out everything I was doing regarding the batch files, all that stuff, but he still couldn't get it to work. And a few days ago, I realised that the reason for this is because PresentMon only works in Windows 10. It does not work in Windows 7. And the reason I discovered that is because I was trying to benchmark Doom on Vulkan under Windows 7, and it simply would not save the data to the file. It would create the file, but it would not save the data. And this was exactly what Andrew's problem was. So at the weekend, I sent over another email saying this is probably what the problem is. So we've had a bit of a chat since. Andrew's been having similar ideas to me. And what he had decided to do was rather than go through all this rigmarole, creating batch files or running from the command line, Andrew had instead decided to write a front end for it, naming it PresentMon Launcher. It's a front end, a GUI written in C Sharp, the point of which, pretty obvious. You can select the process, you can set your delay, you can set your time. So we've been talking about this and this is really going to help. Andrew has contacted Intel over it, and they told him that, yep, this is a very worthwhile addition to the program, and that he is free to distribute it. I, on the other hand, had something different planned. I'm no good at these front-end things. I never really learned how to do them very well. I'm better at things where I need to manipulate data. And at the same time Andrew was doing this, that day that I was waiting on DHL delivering my parcel, I also decided to teach myself Python which as you know is becoming a very popular programming language. In actual fact, I had tried writing this program before and had some kind of success. However, it was written in an old program called Basic 256, which is the only language I was actually comfortable with. I learned to code in Basic when I was about 10 years old, around 30 years ago, and I was never able to really learn C++ or any of this object-oriented stuff. There's always something put me off it. But in this case, I decided it's not a big program. I should really learn Python and get it done properly. Everybody says Python's easy. <laughs> not to me, it's not. But last night, after five or six hours, I finally started to make a breakthrough. And I now have my first working Python program called Present Mon Venture. And simply put, what this is all about is about automating the stuff that should be automated. When you're benchmarking games, you should be playing the game. Benchmarking action sequences so that you're getting a representative benchmark of the actual gameplay. The stuff that should be automated is stuff like this. If I run this program, here we can see in the directory C, present one launcher, which is the directory for Andrew's program, there are a few CSV files. I have renamed these so that they make sense, but basically speaking, we just run the program as before via the launcher and then PresentMon kicks out the CSV file. What I really wanted to get rid of was all that nonsense with the spreadsheet. So this program simply takes the CSV file, loads it up and spits out the minimum, maximum and average frame rate. So that's the first simple step, very similar to Fraps. If all you want is the minimum, the maximum, and the average frames per second from a benchmark run, then this will give you it. You can also choose to enter the name of an output file, but rather than having all of this information, which present one kicks out, as you know, we're really only interested in the milliseconds between presents and the frame rate. The little program I wrote 
simply outputs those two numbers. So again, this is making it an awful lot easier for people who want to manipulate a spreadsheet. So for example, if I wanted to make a chart of the frames per second, I simply need to highlight the column B, click on the chart icon, select line, lines only, and there we go. The frame per second on each instant of the run. Now we can tidy up this chart a little bit so that it's a bit more readable. You can probably tell where this is going. As I improve on the program, there will of course be more columns, more lines for a direct comparison of the cards. So that's what I did yesterday while waiting on my graphics card arriving. So Andrew and I will be working on this in order to continue to improve the process and make it easier for people to benchmark DX12 and Vulkan so that basically they will have no excuses left. And it looks like I've got no excuses left either for not getting my review of the graphics card started. As you can see, DHL has finally delivered it one day late. I'll catch you later, guys.